The bridge that refused to fall. Why did the Hernando de Soto bridge crack? A structural analysis and hypotheses. On May 11, 2021, an inspection by a private company discovered with shock that a primary rope beam on the bearing platform of the 900-foot-long Hernando de Soto bridge had fractured without the maintenance personnel noticing. The fractured element is critical in the stability of the bridge. A damaged element threatens the integrity of the entire structure. A tied arch bridge is a type of bridge in which the outward directed horizontal forces of the arches are borne as tension by a cord tying the arch ends rather than being borne by the ground or the foundations. This strengthened cord may be the deck of the structure itself or consist of separate, deck-independent tie rods. In this analytical animation of the structure, it is shown how close the entire structure was to failing if it had not been attended to in time. A failure in a bridge beam of a tied arch bridge is critical. Without the stress force that holds the superstructure, the system loses containment. The intermediate support of the arch is pressed by the weight of the structure and is subjected to distortions of which it has not been designed to support. In an unfortunate case, it may lead to the collapse of the entire structural system. One hobbyist had reported the damage since 2016. On May 11, 2021, an inspection revealed a break in a three-foot secondary beam of the Hernando de Soto Bridge, a span nearly two miles long, that covers the Mississippi River. What is astonishing about this rupture, an inch-wide cut so straight that almost resembles the work of a power tool, is that it was not noticed nor attended to until the rupture was visible from a distance. A drone inspection in 2019 warned of the initial damage but the bridge was not attended at the time. Why did the Hernando de Soto bridge crack? Another odd fact is that the instrumentation of the bridge equipped with 24 accelerometers, did not detect the damage either. Or perhaps the staff in charge did not understand the variations in the period of the structure. But why did it break? A bit of history. De Soto Bridge is a steel through type arch bridge, across the Mississippi River between West Memphis, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. The architectural design is a continuous cantilevered cable stayed steel through an arch, with bedstead endposts. The construction began on May 2 of 1968 and was inaugurated to the public on August 2 of 1973. The total length is 9,436 feet. The longest span is 900 feet. Water clearance is 100 feet. The bridge is named after the 16th-century Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto, who explored this stretch of the Mississippi River and died in the south of Memphis. Structural Health Monitoring of the Hernando de Soto Bridge The Hernando de Soto Bridge has undergone substantial retrofits due to the proximity to the new Madrid fault line and its importance to the region. Recently, a monitoring system was implemented which tracks the position of the structure and force distribution before during, and after a seismic event. The system provides actionable information to the owners regarding the current behavior of critical bridge components and information for decision-making after an extreme event. Some theories can explain the appearance of this fissure and the final rupture. In a more careful analysis, there are other cracks located in other parts of the structure. In a more careful analysis, there are other cracks located in other parts of the structure. The Virginia e-learning technical team has provided us with a study to figure out the reason behind the failure of this element. Structural analysis. The study provided by Virginia e-learning is a study of distortions under different load cases and combinations to find out the most probable cause for the appearance of this crack. Structural plastic hinges. The hypothesis developed by the team of engineers from Virginia eLearning explores the possibility that the bridge had been damaged by an increase in dynamic loads due to the increasingly continuous traffic of heavy vehicles. Under this increased load, the distortions on the deck would be greater than those the bridge endured over 60 years. These loads could have increased the cyclic load on the structure causing fatigue in the materials. This hypothesis could be tested by reviewing the points of formation of plastic markers in similar points of support of the cover. We have made a model of the Hernando de Soto bridge and we have subjected it to a series of load cases and combinations. As you see, we have the dead load. 
That is the weight of the steel structure. The weight of the coatings. We have considered moving live loads on the six lanes with maximum loads of 35 metric tons. We have considered that this bridge is located near the seismic zone of Nuevo Madrid, located 100 miles away, capable of inducing an earthquake of magnitude 7.7. .7. We have considered the force of the prevailing wind on the structure. The load combinations for ultimate limit state. Lastly, we have set up a case for a catastrophic combination that combines every other case at once on the structure and one combination to the limit state of failure where unfavorably all these cases are combined affecting the bridge. Imagine loads comprised of heavy vehicle transit during an earthquake on a day with winds reaching top speed. In this isometric view, we can see the maximum likely displacements before the unfavorable combination, affected by a scale look at the behavior of the platform at the points near the supports. In emulation, we can notice the formation of plastic markers. Why are plastics hinges dangerous? Plastic hinges become dangerous when a bar is subjected to a series of cyclic loads, repeated push-ups, which cause fatigue in the material. This fatigue degrades the elastic properties of the materials and prevents them from regaining their original resistance. In the structures, this is dangerous as micro-fissures begin to form internally and finally produce deformations and ruptures in the beams and columns that threaten the security of the structure. How a steel bridge is diagnosed? Laser-generated cloud point analysis. Laser point cloud analysis is an advantageous method for locating distortions in structures. A scanner can record millions of points in all directions, a highly detailed picture of the structures and facilities. This imaging process can accurately register the damage, deformations, and cracks of the structure. Once the images are processed, the result is a precise series of sectional views of the structure. Like how doctors can obtain detailed images of a patient's body through a CT scan, a structural engineer can obtain detailed images of a damaged structure for analysis. The review of these sections allows the specialist to know if the elements have been subjected to additional efforts that have exceeded their elastic capacity. The elastic capacity of an element is what determines how much stress it can endure before losing its capacity of resistance. The Bridge of Santa Cruz. In this image, we can observe a concrete structure of a primary vehicular bridge. This bridge is being subjected to analysis after one of the primary beams was damaged during an accident. A point cloud scan allows the structural engineers to assess the damage and check the structure for deformations. Structural vibration analysis. An environmental vibration study allows us to get the actual period of a structure and therefore the measurement of its rigidness. In the same way, this study allows us to calibrate a mathematical model allowing a precision analysis before certain environmental loads such as that created by seismic events or strong winds. More importantly, it will allow us to simulate a proper solution for the repair of the structure and analyze whether it is the most appropriate criteria. Finally, the vibration analysis of the repaired building allows us to know if the rigidity of the structure was solved correctly. At the time of the creation of this video, the bridge has received some urgent aid. However, the definitive solution is still studied. At Virginia Learning, we want all our readers to master structural analysis as a profitable area of specialization for their professional development. We have entry-level tutorials for those who have never used computer-assisted calculation software before. We have specialized courses in topics such as nonlinear analysis for vehicular bridges.